Good afternoon all, it's the 26th of March 2017 and you are down here in the Poly Tunnel in Essex United Kingdom. So today is the day where which I intend to set some tropical seeds. Now two years ago I grew some watermelons with success, last year I had a lot of success with bitter melons. Now I do have playlists on these, growing tropical plants in the UK and I believe I have an entire playlist dedicated to the growing of watermelons in a colder climate. So you want to check that one out. Um, I believe I also have a video on how to grow bitter melons in cold climates as well. So search through my playlist, search through my channel and you should find some videos that can help you with regards to this. Now what I'm going to do today is to set some seeds and I'll show you what I've got. Now these are Bitter melon seeds. Now there's different names for these, bitter gourd, bitter cucumber, bitter melon. I believe the Filipino, uh, Filipino word for them is empalaya, something along those lines. Um, whatever language they, you know, they grow these in those countries, they do have their own word for them. But the seeds are rather curious looking things. We'll let you have a look at those there. So some other seeds what I have here are some drumstick tree seeds. Now, other names for these are Moringa, I believe, and Malungai. So, it grows into a rather large tree in the correct climate. Of course, uh, here in the UK outside, it won't ever reach its uh, potential simply because the frost will kill it. It will not tolerate frost or cold. Another one that I have here that I'm going to be setting is watermelon and the variety I'm going to be using is sugar baby. These are easily acquired. Um, you can usually acquire things like um, bitter melon seeds and moringa drumstick tree seeds on eBay, places like that. Have a look around. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to source them if you're determined enough. So what I'm going to do is start off with some setting of the seeds and I am going to start off with the bitter melon seeds. So I'll give you a little close up that's what they look like, there we go, in the sun there. And I like to set them this way. This is the way I've always set them, straight in like this. I don't know if that's the ideal way or what the professionals do, but it's always worked for me. So I'm going to put them in like this. I like to put them about, um, you know, a centimetre and a half, two centimetres down, something along those lines. So with regards to things like this that aren't necessarily ideally suited to the UK climate. There's some steps that you can take in order to make it better and make your chances of success higher. So you can see what I'm setting into here. Now these are windowsill propagators, they cost me about £2.99 each. You can maybe get them cheaper if you have a look around but that's up to you. And I'll give you a closer look at it. So you can see how it works. So on top here you've got your clear plastic container in which the sun can obviously penetrate and here you've got within them you have your little seed trays, your cells and there's four in each one and there's five all together so you can get 20 in one of these like this and you simply put it in your windowsill. Now I like these because as you water them there's no holes in this uh, green bottom here and Imagine it if there was, the water would run all down your windowsill, all down your wall, all over your carpet, all over your floor, whatever. But of course like this, as long as you're careful with your watering, that, uh, that prohibits that. So I recommend these for this job. Now you put them like that. Now another few steps that you need to take as well. With regard to the compost before you set them, you want to ensure it's at a sort of warmish temperature, which is not necessarily that easy to achieve in a climate like the UK at this time of year. So what you could do is fill up your propagators and then take them inside for a week or so, maybe not even take that long, till the soil is warm and then you can proceed to set your seeds into it because um, you do not want to shock them. So we're going to continue with setting these. Now these are a very nice, whoops, these are a very nice thing to grow. Uh, I remember having a dish with these, and I think it was some sort of vegetable stir fry. It is an acquired taste, I find it quite earthy. But I also like these because it gives off a nice smell when they're growing, and it reminds me of the time that I spent in the tropics. And I do, uh, you know, I'm quite fond about uh, the times I spent in those climates and I do miss them so this in a way is a way that uh, I can remember those times. 
So I can fit 20 in here. So that's that one done. Next step is I'm going to move on to my watermelon sugar baby. I'm going to open these up. And I'll let you have a look at the seeds here. There you go. And the way that I like to set them is I can just show you that way up. See the thin tip at the top? The bottom tip's not so thin. I like to set them that way up, okay? So we're going to put them in here. And the same rules apply. Don't shock them. Make sure that your soil is, your compost is warmish. And I certainly, in a climate like the UK, I wouldn't recommend setting these outside. You know, I mean, you may get success, but I wouldn't bother. I'd control the conditions as much as possible. And when you're setting them, you don't want to be compacting. You don't want to be compacting the, the compost too much. So we're going to put those in. I mean, there's lots of different uh, watermelon varieties. I think uh, Blacktail Mountain, hear that wind? Blacktail Mountain and Charleston Grey are meant to be good ones as well for the uh, UK climate. So we're going to put them in there. Now when you're setting watermelons, of course, you want something growing them in this sort of climate. You want a variety that hasn't got a long growing season because you don't want one that takes a long time and by the time it's ready to produce, you've got frosts and cold because then your effort is wasted. So you want to find one with a relatively short growing season, which is one reason why I've opted for a sugar baby. Okay, the other one, Malungai, Moringa, drumstick tree, I'm going to set these as well. So let's have a look at these. These are interesting looking seeds. And I grew these a few years ago, and I, the way that I pointed to put them in was they looked like they were triangular shape, and I had the triangular shape. So if you think of the triangle like that, I had it growing up like that. So we're going to be putting those in as well. Now, these germinated relatively quick, actually. I think they germinated within certainly just over a week maybe. Now some people soak these, I never bothered with any of that and I found, you know, I didn't find it particularly, well I didn't do it and it didn't make any difference but uh, of course everybody does things differently and that's your you know, prerogative really how you intend to do that. Now an important thing that you need to remember when you are growing things like this is when you water them you want to be watering them with tepid water. You don't want to be shocking them by pouring cold water. So of course, uh, you get your water straight out of the water about this time of year, it, unless of course it's in a uh, you know a warm polytunnel or greenhouse, or whether it's you know had sun on it all day. It's likely to be rather cold, as is water straight out of the tap. So you don't really want to be you don't really want to be doing that. So tepid water so a good way of doing that is uh, just either boil your kettle put some water in there you know and then so you boil your kettle have a little bit of cold hot water in there and then put some cold water on top be careful not to scald yourself of course and the other way of doing it is early in the day get your watering can and put it in front of a fill it up with water put it in front of a south facing wall or in a warm greenhouse or poly tunnel and by the end of the day it should be warm so that's uh, another way of doing it. And these plants, the bitter melons and watermelons, are very hungry plants and they require a good, solid, strong, nutritious growing medium. And I believe I have a video on my watermelon or tropical plant in the UK playlist in which I detailed how to create this. And it was, I think from memory, what I used was good quality organic compost, fish blood and bone, calcified seaweed and um, I think there was something else in there I used coffee ground I used as well and it created a great growing medium and the plants thrived in it so that's one thing you want to be considering and you've got to remember that these can get rather large these plants the bitter melons they really grew up because they grow like a vine so they grow up and they put out little sort of tendrils and they grab onto things and then sort of grow themselves up. So you want to have plenty of space. Now, when I've grown them, I've always grown them in a polytunnel and I was able to create sort of little frames for them. And even these, see here, 
little frames like this and up here and everything they'll all hook onto that and grow away and you'll see the you'll see the fruit hanging and it's a uh, it's quite a nice sort of little thing really they sort of look like a knobbly cucumber so these are more or less set now and what I'm going to do is put some tepid water on them and then I'm going to put them inside on these root trainers and leave them till they germinate so basically that's how I intend to grow my tropical plants in the UK so what you can do is you can actually grow these in containers as well the watermelons that I had the most success with actually were grown in containers and what you want as much as possible because they are quite hungry I'll show you here if you get these big buckets like this I think this is 30 35 litres but these are good you can get your growing medium in there and then once your plants big enough and all risk of frost has passed <coughs> that sort of thing you can then proceed to put them in here and it leaves plenty of room for the roots to put down in order to grow. So there you have it, that's the video. A lot of people have been asking me about how I'm going to go about this this year. So the plants are in, next video showing these, hopefully they will be germinated. And then what I'm probably going to do in here <coughs> is the same as what I did a couple of years ago. Grow them away in, in the pots or something like that and hopefully this uh, this polytunnel in a few months will be like something out of the tropics. Of course, we'll need the weather to go with it. Take care, thank you very much, and speak soon.